What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd J Report. I am your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we can pretty much say we've seen some of the movie for Deadpool 3 or where we think is going to end up. <laughs> if you wanted to see what a live action Wolverine looks like, by golly, you already seen it. On the beach. <laughs> And obviously, we've been hearing the rumors about uh, prior characters making their return. Everybody you've seen in looking different, they even bringing back uh, Frank K, the one, Jean Grey. Everybody's back yeah, for this. Fam, fam yeah, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, it's. It it's confirming the suspicions that we've had since the minute they moved this movie up and everything else got delayed like it, it it's like a they, they want to create a spec it's like a diversion they want to create this majestic spectacle over here so you you don't focus as much on the steaming growing pile of manure that's over there and I, you know this movie's going to make a lot of money like it, it can't help but do that um, the first two made over seven hundred million dollars, and now you bring Hugh Jackman in, and you're going to have the buzz of yeah. whole X verse and and all that. And you have the, I think you're going to have Ryan Reynolds, you know, who who is great at promotion through this character. He is outstanding Same. in that, um, and so I'm sure he will be poking fun at Marvel and poking fun at the MCU and doing things that get people excited to see what Deadpool's commentary is on the state of the union during this movie so all of that i think is going to lead to a very big opening weekend if nothing else and that will ensure that the movie makes you know quite a bit of money it does it whether it does a billion we'll see but you know i think it'll be quite a bit i think it'll make more than the first two so i think it'll get pretty close but then what but bro, is it but actually Brian, a good movie that's a very different question to that's me that's the thing if it's a bad movie brian this could be i've had it this could be I, that I've had it moment where people just don't give a damn. You know, this could be that. And and uh, it's just. And I, I, I don't know if you want to talk about it now a little bit later, but it certainly makes the strike very convenient for things to change yeah. in terms of the direction you want to go, because. After Deadpool 3, it'll be very interesting, Brian, what those after credits will be. I don't know, Brian. I'm I'm just very highly upset that, damn, yo, you couldn't even wait. I mean, it's, I know leaks is hard to, but try harder, yo. Try harder. Collect phones, cell phones from it. I don't know. Do whatever you need to do to hide things like this because when i see it first on screen am i really gonna be that excited bro i don't know i mean you're referring to the beach fight scene between deadpool and wolverine and like you know yes i think there's a it's a shame that for a lot of people the first time you get to see wolverine in the in the, in the comics classic yellow costume is with this sort of unfiltered you know unedited no post-production beach scene like you know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's kind of a shame that that's the first time you see it. I mean, I think in fairness to these two characters, like when I watch the sequences, cause there's a lot of wire work obviously being done. It's impossible for us to know what this will actually look like in terms of the angles, the effects, the cuts, like how they're going to structure this to where and you have a feel for, you know, this is going to have the classic tropes of these two not getting along. And then ultimately kind of having this probably grudging alliance to, to solve whatever problem it is they need to solve. And this scene kind of plays that out because you can clearly mm -hmm. see they're not getting along. Um, you know, they're, they, they, they like go away from each other. Then one attacks the other. And like, you know, all these things look. This is the performance you kind of looking forward to this, that banter. Yeah. So without hearing the audio, without hearing, like seeing the effect, it, I'm willing to kind of say like, all right, I haven't really seen it, seen it. But I hear what you're saying. And like I said, that first shot where I'm like, oh, there's Hugh Jackman wearing that costume. And I'm like, oh, I didn't get to see it on the screen as it was. The problem I have with this is 
how many times are we going to do this? <laughs> like, so we kind of did this in Days of Futures Past already, right? Like, we already kind of yes. had the reunion tour, which was an excellent movie. Everyone felt good about it. Um, and why do we have to? Why do we have to do another swan song for all these characters? Like, I, I, that that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Other than they're trying to cameo things up, which don't they have enough data points now to tell them that like that that alone doesn't work? Like audiences don't care. Like what? Like where is the where is the evidence that just having cameos in a movie automatically means you know massive kind of fan approval and massive box office? Because it's not No Way Home. Those are not cameos. Those are real parts. That's yeah. a story. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Strange too. That's cameos. That didn't go anywhere. People don't like yeah. that. Why are you trying to replicate that? And I don't believe well, I, these characters have a story arc in this movie. Certainly not. And that's and that's the challenge right there. How do you make these all these characters come back? How do you make this not comic booky? Because at the end of the day, Brian. Mr. Ryan Reynolds is the one that has all the say, pretty much. Yeah, but I, that's what I mean. Like, why does this movie need that? Like, the what what makes this movie saleable is Hugh and Ryan together on screen, not the way they were when Wade Wilson literally couldn't talk in one of the more baffling decisions ever made in in X Men Origins, but like. You don't need a lot more than that. Like if you have a good if you have a good script and you have good cre- you, have, you have good creativity and you have good action choreography, the two of them can carry a movie and and it can be excellent. It can be fun. In some ways like there's more risk to bringing all these characters in. I mean little unless unless they're literally doing like one scene and out, like one shot and out, which I don't think they are. You're bogging down, you're, you're burying the lead. I think so. But you're right. I think Ryan Reynolds is clearly approving this. I think he's clearly at the controls to a large extent. He wants this. And maybe he'll be proven right. But I... Let's see. It, it just has that feel of the more we hear about it and the more complex and convoluted it gets, the more it definitely just seems like a showpiece and not like a substantive attempt to push anything forward for us. Yeah, I, I just, I, I, it, I, I'm curious. I, I, that's all I can say, Brian. Is that I'll curious. see it. They already got my money for this one. That's not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But do they have but my money me, for two, three viewings of it? I don't know that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And, and one other thing that sort of bothers. I mean, obviously, if if they go down the route of the X Men at some point in the future, uh, you know. I would have hoped to have seen a yellow suit on, or, or some suit, reminiscent of the comic books or whatever, right? In uh, the new X Men, right? Now, now we're gonna see it on the, you know, on 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 uh, Hugh Jackman, which is fine or whatever. They, I mean, they, I don't know why they missed on that opportunity to do it after it was that end credit scene that they cut from the movie, which was dope. Yeah. Right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'm gonna say it again: Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, Tango and Cash. Brian, any last words? No, you hit it. That's but that's my point. That's why this movie doesn't need that more. Tango and Cash, you know, Lethal Weapon. You know, that's that's, that's what this is. Like that, you don't need it to be that much more than that. But it feels like they're trying to force it to be more than that because of the state of the union. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of Deadpool 3 and what it will bring with all the rumors ha- um, being spoken of. All these guys coming back for another go, for another Chizek. Because that's what they're coming back for. This is their opportunity because it ain't coming back again. What do you think of where it could lead uh, towards the future of the MCU? Could he be the guy to destroy what we currently know as the MCU and create a new one? I don't know. But if he does, 
Hooray. We'll see you next time on the Nigerian Report. The show goes on! Yeah!